Hi, I'm Bob Stern. Hi, I'm Taras Geria. Hi, I'm Dominic Stemmler. We're here to tell you about an exciting new field called biogeodynamics. Biogeodynamics is devoted to exploring how the solid earth and life on it evolve together. The geodynamics of Earth's mantle and lithosphere control surface processes and element cycling between the surface and the mantle, and these, in turn, exert subtle, continuous pressures on life, encouraging it to adapt and evolve. Investigations into linkages between rocks and life continue to advance, but the hard, transdisciplinary work of the earth sciences and the life sciences working together to address this challenge is only beginning. In 2020, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences asked a committee of leading geoscientists to help steer future National Science Foundation research funding by articulating a concise set of high-priority scientific questions that will transform our understanding of the Earth over the next decade. The committee came up with 12 questions ranked in order from the core outwards. Half of these questions pertain to how Earth and life on it came to be and are related to what Aubrey Zirkel calls biogeodynamics. Biogeodynamics is an emerging transdisciplinary field that explores how Earth's tectonic evolution is reflected in its biosphere. The seven biogeodynamic questions in the Academy report are when, why, and how did plate tectonics start? How are critical elements distributed and cycled in the Earth? What are the causes and consequences of topographic change? How does the critical zone influence climate? What does Earth's past reveal about the dynamics of the climate system? How do biogeochemical cycles evolve? And how do geological processes influence biodiversity? Biogeodynamics is deeply rooted in the work of many scientists, principally Fernadsky, Lubflock, and Margulis. Fernadsky viewed the biosphere and the conditions under which life emerged on our planet as inseparable from Earth's interior. The Gaia hypothesis of Lovelock and Margulis proposes that living organisms interact with the inorganic Earth to form a synergistic and self-regulating complex system that helps to maintain and perpetuate the conditions for life on the planet. Biogeodynamics also draws heavily on Earth system science. Earth system science is a transdisciplinary endeavor aimed at understanding Earth's exterior as a complex adaptive system. Earth system science emerged in the 1980s following demands for a new science of the Earth that could support the growing constellation of Earth observing system satellites that were being launched by NASA via observations, modeling, and process studies. The European Space Agency and other national space programs have similar efforts. Biogeodynamics draws heavily on insights from these and other studies of how life and the solid Earth interact. What biogeodynamics does differently is to focus on how these interactions have changed through time. More specifically, it explores how these interactions have evolved in response to changes in Earth's tectonic style. Two key points need to be stressed. First, there is much controversy about how and when Earth's plate tectonic style came into being, and what were Earth's tectonic styles before this. Second, tectonic and biological evolution are similarly slow, both happening on multi-hundred million year timescales. Because of the central role that tectonics plays in controlling life, understanding when major changes in Earth's tectonic evolution occurred can inform our understanding of when and how evolutionary pressures on life changed. Correspondingly, knowing when major changes in biological evolution occurred could provide evidence for when major changes in Earth's tectonic style occurred. Biogeodynamics is not limited by the specific Earth history path but aims to discover generic relationships driving tectonic life interactions over the past 3.8 billion years of Earth history. Some of these insights might also help us understand coupled tectonic biological evolution 
on extrasolar Earth-like worlds. Many different perspectives are needed to advance biogeodynamics, but tectonics is the foundation. The solid Earth is like any active silicate body in being a high energy, far from equilibrium system with thousands of degrees temperature differences between the interior and the exterior. Such bodies will experience multiple tectonic magmatic styles as they cool, and these different styles will influence the development of life in three different ways. First, tectonic style will determine the supply of elements needed for life. These elements are contained within rock, ocean, and atmosphere, and cycled between Earth's surface and the interior via various tectonic, magmatic, and surface processes. Second, different tectonic styles modulate climate differently. Finally, different tectonic styles create habitats differently. All of the biogeodynamic big three are greatly enhanced on an active silicate body with abundant liquid water on its surface. In order to understand how supplies of nutrients, modulation of climate, and creation of habitats have changed through Earth history, we must reconstruct how Earth's tectonic style evolved. This is especially challenging because the tectonic evolution of Earth is a very controversial topic. At this stage, we must establish general principles for the biogeodynamic Big Three for the kinds of tectonic regimes that Earth might have had and then use this understanding to explore how different tectonic scenarios are likely to have stimulated or retarded life and evolution. To understand what kinds of tectonic regimes Earth might have experienced in its history, we can usefully consider the variety of tectonic styles shown by other active Earth-like bodies in our solar system. These are silicate bodies with densities greater than 3 grams per cubic centimeter, and they're greater than 3,000 kilometers in diameter. The four active silicate bodies in the solar system, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter's moon Io, are tectonically and magmatically active. Two main tectonic styles can be distinguished, plate tectonics and single lead tectonics. Only Earth has plate tectonics. The other three show some kind of single lid tectonic behavior, where the convecting mantle is encased in a single, unfragmented, all-encompassing lithosphere. There are multiple types of single-lid tectonic behavior, some of which are revealed by the small sample of active silicate bodies in our solar system. We can see three different kinds of single-lid behavior. Hyperactive heat pipe single-lid on Io, vigorous single-lid on Venus, and sluggish single-lid on Mars. Different tectonic styles are likely to emerge on active silicate bodies as their interiors cool and their lithospheres thicken, strengthen, and become denser. Earth is likely to have had multiple episodes of single-lid behavior. Geoscientists are still arguing about when the modern episode of plate tectonics began, but agree that it was sometime before the Phanerozoic. We are just beginning to explore what were Earth's tectonic styles before that, but some style of single-lid tectonics was almost certainly one of these. Earlier episodes of plate tectonics are also possible. Biogeodynamics investigates how plate tectonics and single-lid tectonics supply nutrients, create habitats, and modulate climate differently. Let's consider nutrient flux first. Life is sustained by more than 20 trace elements nearly all of which are contained within the crust and mantle, cycled between the Earth's interior and the surface by tectonic processes. These are called the bioactive elements, for example, carbon. The most important of these are encapsulated in the ratio of 106 carbon to 16 nitrogen to one phosphorus atoms, known as the Redfield ratio. Phosphorus is especially important for life because it is central to the ATP-ADP cycle. Adenosine triphosphate is an organic compound that provides energy to drive many life processes at the cellular level, including muscle contraction, nerve impulse generation, and synthesis of other organic compounds. 
ATP is found in all forms of life and is often referred to as the molecular unit of currency of intercellular energy transfer. Phosphorus makes up about 0.01% of the mantle, about 0.1% of the continental crust, and 1 to 2% of organisms. No phosphorus, no life. More phosphorus and life can go on an energy splurge. Higher phosphorus supply encourages the evolution of more complex and higher energy life forms. Biogeodynamics wonders how different tectonic styles supply bioactive elements like phosphorus differently. What about climate? Life has an optimal temperature range of about 5 to about 30 degrees centigrade, much smaller than the 100 degrees centigrade temperature range of liquid water. We have a pretty good understanding of how atmospheric CO2 controls surface temperatures because of models like geocarb. CO2 is released to the atmosphere by volcanic degassing and consumed by chemical weathering of rocks on land. The weathering CO2 feedback stabilizes atmospheric CO2 and hence Earth's climate on long timescales. Tectonic style controls magmatism and uplift, and thus atmospheric CO2. Biogeodynamics wonders how single lead tectonic regimes control climate differently via these mechanisms. Finally, let's consider habitat formation. Habitats form as a result of tectonic processes, such as redistributing continents, growing mountain ranges, forming land bridges, and opening and closing of oceans. Different tectonic styles isolate and recombine oceans and land masses differently. Single-lid tectonic regimes seem less capable of creating and destroying habitats. The above three examples of biogeodynamic controls on life are those we recognize today. There may be other tectonic controls we've missed, and we invite others to point these out and start exploring how these controls might differ during plate tectonic versus single lid tectonic regimes. The path forward is to begin quantitative modeling of these processes. We were recently approved by the International Lithosphere Project to establish a coordinating committee for biogeodynamics during 2021 to 2025. Also, check out the biogeodynamics website from time to time. We invite you to become more involved in the exciting new transdisciplinary field of biogeodynamics.